we build barns nowadays and a lot of people actually have a, an equipment person, a specialist that comes in and he uh, sets up your programs for you. Everything's all good, fine and dandy. And uh, he walks away and you turn your machine on to auto and you leave it. And you say, well, it's doing what it's supposed to do because this is what the person had asked me to do or what they had set it up for. Unfortunately, that person only did his best to give you a ballpark figure of what's going to happen. There are so many different things that will happen within that barn that you need to be able to take control of your own environment by measuring it in order to make modifications, changes. And over time, through doing that, you will, in, fa in fact, be able to design a program that your barn will operate on in probably 90% of the cases. Uh, however, until that time, it takes, it takes some legwork in order to make that happen. Um, in a lot of cases in your ventilation issues, you may not know you have a ventilation issue, but you may have noticed it through other things that you just didn't notice. Uh, condemnations, uh, ascites issues, higher mortalities, barns getting wet, um, moisture weeping off your walls, uh, dripping off the, uh, off, off the roof. There's all kinds of different uh, indications that, that you have missed or may have missed uh, that have shown that something is going on and you need to be able to look at it. So, just going to get started here. The reason that a lot of people have it, I, I talked about demystifying ventilation, is that there's just so much going on. Um, do you use uh, chimney ventilation, sidewall ventilation? Do you use um, tunnel ventilation? Do you, are your inlets in the roof or in the, on the walls? Are they uh, at the front of the barn? Which kind of fans do you buy? Do you buy 48 inch? Do you buy 72 inch? Do you buy 18 inch? Uh, all of these things tend to factor in to make this very, very confusing. What I want to be able to try and show is that there, are, there is a way that we can break this up so that it will not be as confusing as it sometimes is. Okay, why do we ventilate barns? I have some questions here for you, and there's a number of different things going on here. Ventilation is the only way to remove moisture out of your barn. Now, you can use other things to help you, but it doesn't remove it. So, for instance, the bedding in your barn, the, the, the amount of bedding that you put in your barn is, is just a big sponge. So, it'll utilize and it will absorb moisture out of the air, but eventually it becomes saturated and water starts to sit on top of it if you don't move it out of there. So, the more litter, the better. And if you do not have enough litter, then ventilation is your only key way of keeping that barn dry. Otherwise, you're going to have wet barns. Now, we look at why ventilation is very important. Uh, I, I love this little cartoon image. People say that it doesn't really make a difference. We live in Western Canada. Ventilation isn't a big issue. Uh, it is an issue. Ventilation is a massive issue for us. And in fact, I would argue that ventilation for us is even more complicated in Western Canada than it is in other areas. We have huge elevations that a lot of people don't deal with. Uh, we have temperature fluctuations from minus 30 to plus 30 plus. Can go above that as well we have humidities that'll that'll range from you know low humidity to high humidity and all of these things have a direct influence in your barn it's happening every day whether you like it or not whether you want to do something about it or not it is happening every single day and this is what's happening to birds on your farm if that temperature is getting out of control even by a small amount you can see slight increases panting all of these things are starting to affect your birds and then we wonder, you know, you hear nutritionists say, well, I don't know, we, we made the same ration, it didn't work on Joe's farm, and it worked over there on Paul's farm, and it didn't work on this. There are so many things happening in your own barn environment that are affecting the way your birds are being able to consume the feed that's put in there, and the genetic potential of the bird that you have in your barn. So please keep it in mind that heat actually can cause a problem in this province every summer, and in fact, Sometimes it's uh, even earlier than summer, but heat will cause a problem. If you're running at the end of your cycle in the last week and you're looking for 20 degree temperatures and you're sitting there at 26, 27 degrees and you think things are okay, it's not okay. I guarantee you you're losing performance. Genetic potential is not being reached if that's happening. You may have life and a lot of us farmers, we measure success by we didn't lose birds. However, that does not mean that it's uh, that you're actually been able to successfully grow those birds to genetic potential. This is another idea of uh, an optimum performance. There are thermal zones within that barn. You can see it whether your birds are cold or your birds are hot. In either instance, 
you're causing an issue to your birds and your performance in that barn is being eroded if you're outside of the goalposts. So I always sort of look at the goalposts and, and I'm trying to hopefully show you some goalposts here that you can go home and, and measure yourself to ensure that you're on the right path. Um, a few degrees off at the front doesn't look so bad, but as you go through a cycle, the few degrees off means you missed the, the ballpark altogether. So it's really important that we keep that in mind.